Hey, welcome back to the Car Doctor Studios. Thanks for stopping by. I'll start this video by saying that this tip is going to be relevant to folks with Ford products and I'm going to go with between like 96 through 2008 year model vehicles, cars and trucks included. And you may be experiencing a illuminated check engine light with stored codes P0171 and or code P0174. Also, you may be accompanied with a stored code P1101, indicating a mass airflow circuit. Or you may not have any codes and just experiencing a loss of power, bogging, poor acceleration, poor fuel mileage. And I think this video might be helpful, give you a few tips and tricks. This particular vehicle is a 2002 Ford F-150, and this is equipped with the 4.2 motor. And the customer came in complaining of a sudden lack of power on acceleration, and it was very intermittent. And uh, he also said that the check engine light's been on for several months. So basically, what he described is more of an electronic, electrical type of issue because of its intermittent nature. I wasn't really going towards a mechanical type issue. There's a possibility, especially with the newer cam phaser vehicles, that there could be some type of mechanical issue leading to this type of a problem, but normally that's associated with some type of engine noise or oil pressure problem or something like that. So in this case, I was definitely zeroing in on the electronic side of things, and the first thing that came to my mind was fuel pump issues and these Ford fuel pump modules can definitely have the typical run like crap, run perfectly fine, not run at all, back and forth, and sometimes difficult to figure out. But anyway, I basically pulled in this vehicle, and the first thing I did was pull the codes, which I had two stored codes, the P0171 and the P0174. That indicates a lean condition on both bank one and bank two. So then you start thinking, well, there could be a vacuum leak and, and a misfire issue, something causing a lean condition, but it's across both banks. So on these Fords, you start thinking the PCV valve, which is a, the PCV hose is a common problem, uh, stuff like that, but it wouldn't be necessarily intermittent. Uh, and the codes may or may not have anything to do with the actual complaint of the customer. What I also did though is run the key on engine off tests. And when I did that, it came up with the, the code P1101 for a mass airflow circuit out of range. Well, then I performed some kind of drivability tests where I actually ran the vehicle and uh, monitored the fuel pressure, which initially my fuel pressure reading looked great and was holding steady, but the vehicle wasn't acting up. I also monitored the data stream and took a close look at all my PIDs there. The, the O2 voltages were good. They were switching normally. Even the mass airflow, given the, the, uh, the engine size here and at idle, hovering around one volt, was probably a, uh, a decent reading as far as the mass airflow. But on a side note, if you are experiencing the code P0171, and the code P0174 not necessarily associated with a major performance related issue, the mass airflow sensor uh, becoming contaminated is a potential cause. So if that's where you're at, I would definitely recommend uh, getting some mass airflow cleaner, removing the, the air filter cover where the mass airflow sensor is located, and cleaning that out good with some mass airflow cleaner and then clearing your keep alive memory and uh, driving this puppy and seeing if those things come back. If it's not a vacuum related issue, it's very common that a dirty mass hair flow sensor could cause those codes. But this one being coupled with the performance related problems and the intermittent nature led me more towards the electronic side of that sensor being at fault. And then eventually, as I was running the vehicle and monitoring the fuel pressure and watching the data, 
uh, when I loaded it by putting it in drive and then uh, kind of power braking it and giving it a light acceleration, suddenly the problem began to occur. And as I'm monitoring the fuel pressure, the fuel pressure remained steady and constant. So I knew that side of things was looking good. And, uh, but I did see on the data stream where the mass airflow became erratic. The, uh, the reading for that was well under what it should be given the throttle angle I was using. So it even confirmed to me that indeed this was on the mass airflow side of things and uh, that was probably the direction I was gonna be going. Basically, I just wanna confirm at this point that the wiring connector is okay. So basically at this point, I just made the call to replace the mass airflow sensor. And uh, along with that, the air filter, which was a little bit dirty and it seemed to be a little bit undersized where the ceiling surface may be allowing dirt to pass through. And that's a common issue, allowing the mass airflow wiring to get dirty and cause improper reading. So uh, to alleviate any possible future problems, I replaced the air filter, cleaned up the housing and the mass airflow sensor. Now, in this case, I used a new mass airflow sensor. There's, of course, Reman and new and uh, OE, Motorcraft, Reman, Motorcraft, new. Uh, quite a variety of different parts available and they're kind of expensive. In this case, I went with an aftermarket new mass airflow sensor. I highly recommend that you go with a new sensor if you can get it at a reasonable cost. A lot of the remands are just iffy and uh, especially the intermittent issues where they'll test fine on the bench at the rebuilder and they go through it and and throw it in a box and you get it and slap it on and you just bought yourself another intermittent issue that they weren't able to detect on the bench in the rebuilding process and it's going to drive you crazy and pull your hair out like me i've pulled out some hair in my days trust me so anyway i went with a new one and basically in this case it just required uh, disconnecting the electrical connector for the mass airflow sensor which on this motor is uh, connected to the air filter housing on the intake side of the air filter housing so I just removed the electrical connector I loosened the hose clamp on the intake duct and then I, I removed the large clamp which holds the filter housing to the to the air filter area and then I throw that up on the bench and uh, in this case, you have to pry the little housing apart and you have to get a little, a little room, a little length on your connector uh, where the wire enters the housing so that the uh, in, inner part of the housing can, can pull out enough to where you can disconnect the connector at the actual sensor. And once that portion has been removed, you just flip it over remove the two attaching screws and replace the sensor assembly. Uh, you just want to make sure and orient it in the proper direction and then reassemble it just by reversing the procedure. And then of course I've replaced the air filter and I'm going to clear the cam and go ahead and uh, confirm my repairs. But in this case with the intermittent nature of this problem to begin with, uh, we can only do so much to try and confirm that this this has been a fix and then just turn it back over to the customer and and uh, keep our fingers crossed but I feel pretty good about this one and uh, I hope that this video is helpful for you and gives you a little bit of guidance along the way and sometimes we just need a little bit of encouragement to uh, help us when we dive in under the hood and I hope it saves you some money and gets you back on the road. All right, well, I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for the likes and subscriptions again, and uh, wish you good luck with your repairs. Have a good one.